The Cuphead DLC is almost here. Oh my god! So obviously, I'm in the Cuphead mood. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I go on these kind of gaming tangents where I just try to research similar type games to ones I'm anticipating to tide me over, so to speak. And in doing that, I was reminded of the horrible, terrible, vile, nefarious, and evil attempt at cloning one of the best games of all time. Enchanted Portals. Um, okay guys, the name is shit. Can we take it from the top? I don't know, try Wizhead or something. In all honesty though, when I first saw footage of this game, my initial reaction wasn't, Ah, oh, look at the Cuphead clown, get original ideas, devs. Rather, I was pretty excited for a new game inspired by one of my all-time favorites. But the world wasn't ready. You see, in order to be inspired by a game, there is a time factor involved. Take Hollow Knight, for example. People were not ready for Crowsworn to happen so soon after one of the greatest games of all time recently released. I guarantee, if Crowsworn was announced like 10 years later without a single change in the art style, you wouldn't hear a peep about Clone. Instead, people would be losing their minds that a new game inspired by their favorite was in the works. Don't believe me? Look at Mina the Hollower. It's literally just Game Boy Advance Zelda at first glance. Obviously, same as with Crowsworn, the mechanics themselves have a twist, but nobody seems to care because it's been long enough that the word clone apparently doesn't apply anymore. Somebody please explain this to me. No, really. I honestly think it's great that these Enchanted Portal devs played the game Cuphead and loved it so much they were inspired to make a similar game. Why do people have to wait years and years to make the game they really want to? What's so wrong with having multiple games in a genre that you've fallen in love with? Cuphead is in my top 5 all time, but I can only play it so many times. But give me a new boss rush bullet hell game with new enemies, concepts, and mechanics, and I would say hell yes, let me eat that up right now. This whole clone thing is just fabricated by ignorant fans of games that can't possibly imagine a game being as good or standing next to their favorite thing ever. It's just a really odd mentality and I don't understand why we see it so often. So here's the thing, Enchanted Portals could end up sucking. Oh no! Crowsworn could be trash. Mean to the Hollower might be the worst game ever made. So what? How does this affect the games they were inspired by in any way? Will Crowsworn somehow make Hollow Knight counteractively lose money? <coughs> Would Enchanted Portal's bombing ruin MDHR? Would Yacht Club games have to go back to making Mega Man clones if Mina fails? So let's go a little more in-depth into Enchanted Portals and the whole clone accusation. And of course, the first thing that everyone is going to say is that the art style is too similar. Did MDHR create that art style? Are they the first to ever use it? Of course not, they literally copied old 40s style cartoons and animations to make a game. Do they all of a sudden have a monopoly over that art style in gaming? Does Hollow Knight have a monopoly on hand-drawn art? The answer is obviously no, and you are actually a moron if you think otherwise. So, the art style isn't an issue then, right? Good. Now if you look at the actual quality of the animation and art, it's certainly not in the same league as post-launch Cuphead. But you have to remember, this is a pre-Kickstarter game we are seeing. And honestly, it's pretty much at the same level as the first Cuphead footage we got was. Does this mean Enchanted Portals will reach the same quality? Well, of course not. That's not guaranteed at all, but it doesn't really have to. Aesthetics-wise, I actually do think Enchanted Portals has its own identity. The main characters are memorable enough, and most of the areas and boss designs seem to have their own idea. Except this lobster guy. Cuphead fans really seem to take offense at Mr. Krusty, but like, guys, it's a lobster. There's only so many ways to draw and animate a lobster. Does Cuphead hold the rights to lobster animation? Don't answer that. Actually, if you take a close look at the art styles, I would say Enchanted Portals has its own theme. While Cuphead fits that 40s cartoon style really well, Portals looks kind of like a Cartoon Network show turned into a game. The fantasy type theme also helps it separate itself, and all in all, I really think this art style can stand on its own. Besides that, people complain that the weapons were too similar. Again, there are only so many ways you can make bullets fire on a 2D plane. Spread shot, charge shot, sniper shot, these are all staples of the bullet hell genre and Cuphead doesn't get to monopolize them. Anyways, all this negative PR really hurt the Kickstarter's chances of success and inevitably they did not reach the funding goal, despite many solid-headed people's efforts of stopping the bogus clone narrative. So what's the status of the game now? We didn't hear much for about two years and the project seemed dead. But actually things are looking up for Enchanted Portals, as recently in February of 2022, the devs announced that they have partnered with Epic Mega Grants, which gives them funding to accelerate the development of the game. Look, I hate Epic 2, but if this gives the devs a chance to fulfill their vision, then I'm okay waiting an extra six months to get the game on Steam. And then wouldn't you know it, Enchanted Portals got another group of people upset. They released a really short teaser in April, and in the footage we saw a cool looking castle level, 
and then some chickens in like old Native American getup, and this really pissed off some people. Oh no! The devs were immediately hit with the racist and insensitive card, and it was looking like another dumpster fire. The team immediately released a statement apologizing for their wrongdoings. We are a two-person studio from Spain, and there's a large cultural disconnect here. We were unaware of how hurtful and problematic those depictions were. We sincerely apologize. And with this, they also released an image of the once Native American chickens, now turned into cowboy chickens on the same buffalo. This will allow them to stick with the same western theme, except now instead of Indians shooting arrows at you with bows, it will be cowboys shooting arrows at you with guns. Is there anyone of Native American descent that cares to comment their thoughts? Do you find this boss offensive? Would love to hear your stance on this whole thing, so comment below. It makes sense they are changing this though, the PR around their game is already really fragile, so having something like this pop up would hurt the numbers a ton. And that's actually the most recent development with this game. Man, what a ride it has been. I really hope that the game eventually makes it through this living hell to see the light of day, because the ideas presented are actually really cool. The mechanics are similar, but that's exactly what I would want from a Cuphead-inspired game. Giant boss battles with bullet hell style combat and wacky animations. Like, why do you think I'm excited for Crowsor and the turn-based deck-building roguelike aspects? I will say though, not everything we have seen from this game is stellar. The attack animations for the characters look flat, some of the bullet effects are just plain bad, and overall combat seems a little bit slower paced. It's designed as a co-op game at heart, so it makes sense that everything has to be slowed down to make it an enjoyable experience. But let's face it, I don't have friends to co-op with, and neither do you, so the single player aspect is what we care about, and we haven't seen a single shot of solo play. I wonder if the single player will be a little more fast paced to make up for the fact that there isn't as much to keep track of. One thing that they seem to emphasize more are the platforming stages. If you didn't know, Cuphead's running guns were added last minute, they were never planned to begin with, which explains at least for me why they felt sloppier and less interesting than the meat of the game. With Enchanted Portals building these stages in from the beginning, my hope would be that they are more seamlessly fit into the world and work with the flow of the game much better. I do actually really like the separation of level from boss though making it really easy to refight a boss you like without having to get through an entire stage of a game to reach it. I wish more games in general did this. Mainly I'm thinking of Mega Man, because much like in Cuphead, I find the platforming stages in those games kind of tedious and boring. I would much rather just have a straight boss rush with optional stages on the side. Keep in mind though, I've only played Mega Man 8 through 11, so maybe the stage design is better in the earlier games? Any Mega Man fans watching right now that can chime in on this in the comments? Like I said, the Cuphead DLC is almost here to satiate my need for those difficult bullet hell boss battles, but it's been a long time coming, and from what we have heard, it's not going to be a large amount of content, so having Enchanted Portals to hopefully look forward to is nothing but a positive in my opinion. And honestly, I hope we see even more games like this pop up in the near future. You hear that, aspiring indie devs? Here's a tip, if you want to stand out, make less deck builders and roguelikes, and maybe try making more boss rush style games. Or perhaps a good Terraria clone. The only decent one we have so far is Minecraft. And the boss battles in that game suck.